Greetings from Lebanon. It is a privilege indeed to join you and share about the Ministry of the Lebanese Society for Educational and Social Development and about the local church in Lebanon as we seek together to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the community, especially during these rather challenging times. Our journey at LSSD started in 1998 and since then it has been a series of steps of faith prompted by God to strengthen the witness of the church in Lebanon and the region. First through equipping the church, but also through serving society, knowing that loving our neighbor is a practical expression of our love for God. And we seek to serve society first by addressing issues of poverty and vulnerability, but also through inclusive education and pursuing the right to education for all, uh, be they refugee children or children with special needs. Our approach as LSSD is a holistic, integrated one made possible through the uh, family of ministries that come under LSSD, each of which has a particular sectoral focus and each of which addresses challenges from their own um, area of expertise, be it um, relief, community development, inclusive education, psychosocial support, leadership development, resource development or any other sector. And along with all this, the good news of the gospel is integrated into every aspect of who we are and what we do. And in line with our mandate to equip the church to be the church in the community, LSSD partners with local churches and community-based organizations um, to enable them to respond to current and emergent needs in the community all the time applying such uh, Christian values as non-discrimination, non-conditionality, respecting the dignity of the other, um, uh, ensuring the participation of the recipients in the planning um, of programs and proposals. Um, and this is one way we maintain the dignity of um, the care recipient. Our context is a very complex one, uh, yet over the years we have learned that in every uh, challenging circumstance there's an opportunity for ministry. So how much more opportunities can there be in a complex context like ours? Take for instance sectarianism. Sectarianism grew um, in Lebanon um, in an unanticipated way during the Lebanese War between 1975 and 1990 a war that left its toll on Lebanese and on the nation as a whole, um, increasing uh, displacement, fragmenting society, uh, dividing the country along religious lines, creating unemployment, destroying the economy uh, and the standard of living. And between the uh, civil war in Lebanon and between the um, sectarian context and between the divided loyalties of the Lebanese, the public sector in Lebanon became so very weak and could not address the needs. This gave rise, like uh, as is the case in any other post-conflict nation in the world, this gave rise to the formation of non-governmental organizations, NGOs, as well as faith-based organizations, such as LSSD, that set out to address the needs arising from the war, but also address other humanitarian needs in the country. During this period, uh, the civil war period, um, the church in Lebanon became inward focused. Their main concern at the time became survival and not the transformation of the society. Um, a challenge that LSSD set out to address since its formation in 1998. Another challenge that we face in Lebanon is the reality that Lebanon has the highest per capita concentration of refugees in the world. With the start of the war in Syria in 2011, Lebanon witnessed an influx of uh, Syrian families into Lebanon. Um, unlike Jordan and Turkey, Lebanon did not set up official camps for refugee, Syrian refugees in Lebanon, such that um, as they entered the country seeking shelter, they scattered anywhere and everywhere. 
And the reality today is that it's anticipated that in Lebanon today, one in four people is a Syrian refugee and one in three is a refugee, either Syrian or Palestinian or Iraqi. And as they scattered across, and, and as Syrians scattered across the nation, uh, fear, feelings of fear and animosity were reignited amongst a good number, a good number of the Lebanese who always thought of Syrians as the enemy. Amongst those were members of our churches. Yet God did not leave it at that. He gave rise to prophetic voices within our churches who challenged these feelings of fear and animosity, um, creating awareness or raising awareness um, on the role of the church vis a -vis the community. A story that I often like to share um, about uh, these transformations that God brought about in our churches is about a church that I visited early on with the start of the refugee crisis. At the time, this church was not responding to the needs of refugees, and so when I asked the pastor why not, he explained that uh, they were concerned that if they start working with refugees, they would lose members of the Lebanese congregation who were themselves negatively affected by Syrian presence in Lebanon during the civil war. A few months later, that same pastor contacted us wanting to start a partnership with us to serve the needs of Syrian refugee children. And in no time, in about in a couple of years' time, our partnership grew to cover several centers in, in different areas in, of the Bekaa region. And when I asked the pastor what changed, he said, God is using our work with Syrian refugees to teach us about him and the first lesson is forgiveness. He said, I knew from day one what needed to be done, but I also knew that our church was not ready. And so I went down on my knees and I prayed and I asked God for wisdom. And then as soon as I felt that the church was ready, I invited them into a meeting and I asked them, um, do you love Jesus? And they said, yes. And he said, do you really love Jesus? And they said, yes. He said, look around you. What do you see? And what do you think Jesus would expect you to do? And that was the start of a beautiful ministry that continues to date between this church and refugee community in Switzerland. In fact, as you visit this church, you will find that the community has completely embraced the Syrian community. It is a very diverse church. It is a sample of what we will find in heaven. Those who are blessed are called to share their blessings with others. The Lausanne Covenant states that a church that preaches the cross must be marked by the cross. Uh, it becomes a stumbling block to evangelism if we betray, if it betrays the gospel or lacks a living faith in God or a loving, a genuine love for people. Sadly, in Lebanon today there are churches that until today they remain inward focused. Despite the fact that around 60% of the population of Lebanon today is living below the poverty line. Yet those who have responded to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and have um, moved out of their comfort zone, those have been through a beautiful journey of transformation that has not just transformed them but also the care recipients. In fact, every one of those partner churches can share their own story of how God worked both within them and through them, and how God shaped the new understanding of the role of the church in the community. One such pastor uh, recently stated that the church is not just for preaching. In fact, the message preached on Sunday must be lived throughout the week in the community. He also noted that uh, true uh, discipleship is one that is um, handled through fellowship uh, and through living the gospel in the community. Al Hassesi today partners with more than 25 churches in Lebanon addressing together the needs of Syrian refugee families in the country. Our programs range from addressing basic needs such as food and non-food items, um, 
to child protection, uh, education for Syrian refugee kids, livelihoods, also psychosocial support, um, leadership development, and programs that are specific for children. Far from being mechanical, the approach of the churches is very relational. Trust is built as care recipients sense the genuine care attention given to them at the hands of um, church members. The Ministry of Compassion amongst refugees has uh, impacted our churches big time, also the care recipients as well as the wider community. For instance, one church partner noted that our church is no longer the same. It has become a home for Syrians, for Iraqis, and for Lebanese. We have become a family. There is no room for condemnation in our church anymore. Only rest, support, and hope. She says even those that have left the country, they have been settled elsewhere, uh, they still maintain a strong relationship because this church has created a deep sense of belonging that brings, draws everyone together. Another church partner noted that uh, since the start of the refugee crisis and when Syrians started coming to our church, nothing um, has been the same. Our church is now a very diverse church. We have learned uh, to uh, uh, we have learned to accept uh, people who think differently, who talk differently, who dress differently. We have learned to look at them as people created in the image of God, and we have learned to love them. We have learned the true meaning of grace, of love, and forgiveness. We have become one family in Christ. In reality, this ministry of compassion is creating an incentive for people to serve. Um, previously, it would have been, before the crisis, refugee crisis, it would be maybe a handful of people in, in the local churches who have been uh, serving in the church. Today, um, almost all pastors say we cannot hold back our members. Everyone is involved in the ministry. Um, it also cre has created in some of our uh, church churches um, uh, sort of a base, a sending base for those who um, would like to serve but do not know where and how. So they come to those churches, partner churches, and there they send them out to serve. This is totally new for our churches in Lebanon. Normally we're used to having missionaries come from abroad. Today, our churches are sending people to serve within the local communities. The ministry also uh, reaps ripple effects, even um, from children to parents. A mother of a child who is enrolled at one of our church-based learning centers told his teacher that um, Every day after school, the child comes home and shares with his mother the uh, biblical passage that was studied in the morning chapel at school. And then he asks her to read it out loud for all of them uh, in the tent. And then uh, they together uh, try to extract from it applications for their day-to-day -day life. And this is a child. The image of the church in the community has changed. Now, uh, people look at the church as a place where everyone is welcome, regardless of affiliation, religious background, um, or any other uh, uh, focus or, or uh, background. Care recipients have been drawn uh, to our churches like Lou because your Jesus answers prayers. They come to us because we really care and they come to us because we want to know the God we serve. One um, recently a man came to one of our churches and he said, I want to be, I want to join you, I want to become evangelical like you. And the pastor said, um, there is no need for you to do so, why do you want to do so? And the man said, you're helping me when no one else is helping me. And the pastor said, we're helping you because you're going through a rough time and it's our duty to stand by your side. But there is no need for you to become an evangelical. Uh, the Bible is in your hands. All you have to do is read the Bible and uh, live by it. That's all we need from you. So there is this genuine interest in knowing why are our churches 
doing the kind of work that they're doing today. Um, the church has also become um, the safety net for um, the refugee community. Let me back up a bit and explain that for us as Middle Easterners. When I'm uprooted from my town and my home, I not only lose uh, the physical uh, my physical home, I lose my sense of community and my community is my safety net. And so um, Syrian refugees who have had to leave their home, they have lost much more than their physical homes. They've lost their sense of community. And today those churches who are um, reaching out to them, to them have become that community, that safety net that um, the people need. The Ministry of Compassion has also changed the image of the church in the wider community um, amongst uh, government officers, amongst municipalities. People look at the kind of work that the church is doing and the scope of it and the amount of love that is invested in it. And this is uh, creating a sense of respect amongst municipalities, in amongst uh, the police, in amongst uh, government bodies for the church. Lebanon today is hit hard by compounded crises that have left around 60% of the population living below the poverty line. As a result, the scope of the ministry had to be expanded to include not only Syrian refugees, but also Lebanese refugees and migrant workers who have been affected by uh, one or more crises, be it the stringent banking restrictions or withdrawals that have left led to the bankruptcy of many businesses and to the laying off of many employees and the loss of source of income, or to or by the financial and economic decline, or even by COVID-19 and uh, the lockdown measures. And last but not least, by devastating August 4th were great explosions uh, that have brought about more loss, more pain and more suffering. In response, we, had, we have launched uh, several programs that address these and other needs, these and other new and emergent needs. And our programs include the provision of uh, monthly food and multi-purpose uh, vouchers, hygiene kits for the protection of the families uh, from the pandemic, uh, our churches this time to have risen to the challenge and I mean the very next day following the um, explosion our churches were down on the streets of Beirut helping the families clean the debris while we were assessing the needs and preparing hot meals for uh, the families as well as for the volunteers who were helping them. Interestingly, it is the same churches that are working with Syrian refugees that have rushed to the aid of families affected by brain explosions and COVID-19 and the economy decline. It is as if um, being sent out and being the hands and feet of Jesus has now become part of the DNA of these churches, which is so beautiful. The experience that they have gained through working with Syrian refugees over the past 10 years has rendered them um, more efficient and has enabled them to rush to the support of families affected by the crisis in a more effective uh, and timely manner. The scope of the compounded crises has necessitated that uh, the different LSSD ministries come together and plan an integrated uh, two-phase response that involved distribution uh, of fruit um, and uh, hygiene kits, but also repairing homes, repairing schools um, in time for the new academic year, and also um, provision of uh, uh, hot meals, uh, programs that speak, online programs that speak to the new and emergent needs of parents, children, and youth who are struggling um, with the whole issue of social distancing and having to stay at home. Um, especially this, especially there was a need for such a program, especially as um, we witnessed a sharp rise in the cases of domestic abuse uh, during the lockdown. Um, also, um, and uh, also
also following and uh, learning from UNICEF that about 600,000 children who live in the vicinity of the Beirut disaster area are maybe suffering from short to, ter short to long term uh, psychological challenges. Our uh, special needs center set up um, uh, a program to provide psychosocial support for children who have been affected by the explosion. Those who were themselves in the Beirut area or others who have been impacted by um, the scenes that they've saw, they've, uh, the uh, scenes that they had saw on TV, or the news that they heard from through their parents. So, uh, and our children, last but not least, our children youth ministry developed what we call Camp in a Box, which is um, a box that brings together um, activities and crafts and stories and reading material for kids that can keep them busy in a very constructive way for at least 15 days of the month. And the reality is that um, it appears that our ministry amongst the Lebanese is having the same fruits, the same impact as that of the, impact, uh, the ministry of the church amongst refugees. More and more Lebanese are wanting to know the reason why the church is standing by them in their hour of need. In their hour of need. And this, again, is another reason why we uh, tend to look for the opportunity for ministry in every challenging circumstance. Friends, the compounded crises in Lebanon have become an opportunity to serve. And while the year 2020 has been a rather difficult year for millions of people all across the globe, a local partner church recently shared with me that it has been the most fruitful for them in terms of ministry. As Jesus sends us out into, the world, into uh, the world, and let us remember that he also invites us to carry his yoke upon us. For he says in Matthew 11, 29, 30, For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Clearly we were not invited to a life of comfort. Reflecting on the load of the ministry that he and his church are carrying today, serving both Lebanese and Syrians, a partner, pastor, said, Yes, we are burdened, but the burden of serving the Lord is sweet and much lighter than the burden that comes from, obey from not obeying God's calling. God has a plan. He has a mission. And as Chris Wright puts it, God does not have a mission for his church, but rather God has a church for his mission. And his mission, as per Ephesians 1, 9, 10, is to bring healing and unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. If God's mission is for the whole of the church, then it is the responsibility of the whole church. Who else can bring hope to the people except the church?